All right, gang, so last night I picked up an Area 51 that's in an NFL Blitz cabinet. Uh, someone converted this NFL Blitz cabinet to Area 51 at some point in the past, and what's odd is that it has an MK4, Mortal Kombat 4 control box, and a Mortal Kombat 1 control panel. <laughs> so I don't know how this conglomeration of stuff came together like this, but uh, it's an NFL Blitz cabinet uh, with a uh, monitor that died. So I got this on Facebook Marketplace from a guy for 160 bucks. Uh, it worked and functioned. You could hear the game running and everything, but no monitor. So he took the monitor out and put another monitor in, and same thing. He turned it on and the fuse blew. He put a new fuse in, fuse blew. So he's like, you know what? I'm done messing with it. And he just put it on Facebook Marketplace, and I snagged it for 160 bucks. So I couldn't pass that up. I'm going to actually end up converting this to a WWF WrestleMania to go in the arcade. But uh, for $160, I could not pass this up. Uh, but for this, for the scope of this video, we're just, we're just going to work on the monitor. This is going to be on my second channel on the restoration and the, in the uh, not restoration, the conversion. That'll be on my separate channel. But for this video and this channel, we're just going to focus on the monitor. So, NFL Blitz uh, came with the U5000. Oh, I have the back door on. Came with the U5000 <clears throat> or a Neotech. Uh, it, neither one of those require an isolation transformer, and there is no isolation transformer installed in this cabinet. So, when the owner of this, uh, the original monitor died, and the only one he had, uh, I didn't ask where the original one went, the only one he had that he was able to put in was a K7000. I mean, as you can see, K7000. So he was unaware or ignorant of the fact that this requires the isolation transformer. And when he put this in here, kaboom, and you can see the fuse here is uh, destroyed. Nice and kablooey. And he put another one in, blew it. So, uh, yeah, the, we're going to get this. For this video, we're going to fix this K7000. And we're going to use it for this project, hopefully. So let's get it inside, uh, get it inspected, torn down, and, and reworked, and see what we can figure out as to what's going on. I, I guarantee I already know what's wrong with it because, you know, no isolation transformer on this destroys very certain items, and I guarantee you that those are bad. Uh, also, what's interesting is, is that he doesn't have it installed properly. Instead of sitting back there in the cradle, uh, it's shifted over. Let's get a better angle here. It's uh, shifted over to this way. It's not sitting in the cradle, and he has it kind of zip tied through these holes here on both sides. So I don't think anything under there is metal. I don't, I don't think it's shortened out to the frame. I think this actually would, would technically work and be okay. Uh, you know, it'll flop up and down this way. But uh, I think the main problem with this obviously was the no isolation transformer. So let's get this inside, uh, get it torn down, inspected, and gone through. Oh, holy cow. Holy cow, I just saw this. Look at C57 here. I think that's C57. Can we see that? Uh, look at this. Holy cow, that went kablooey. Yeah, these are the original caps, by the way. Kaboom! I haven't seen one split open that, that much in recent memory. So we may have more wrong with this than I thought. Now that I see that... Um, I wonder what the... Oh, it's 2 amp. I don't know if we can see that. Uh, BEL3SB2A. So it's a 2 amp. So it wasn't overrated. But yeah, obviously we got... Now that I see that, standing here over it, looking down at it, I saw that cap just now. Wow. Okay, well, let's get this inside. No more lollygagging and get it torn down and inspect it and see what we can figure out. All right, so monitor is on the bench. But before we start digging into it, I want to do a health check of the tube. And that's because the tube has a lot of screen burn in it. I wonder if I can uh, disregard the full trash can there. It's <laughs> lots of boxes and junk in there from stuff that's been shipped to me. But let's see if I can turn my light on here. There, look at, I don't know what game this is, but it's got some pretty, I think that says credit zero. Uh, it's got some pretty gnarly screen burn in it, and I don't even know if this would have even worked for the Area 51, because this is... I don't have any idea. <coughs> Pardon me. I don't have any idea what game this was, but... Um, looks like a separate section there and there. But anyway, so you can see it's got some pretty gnarly screen burn. You can almost make out the lettering, but... So because of this, I want to check the health of the tube before we really go uh, any further. So let me get the camera up on the overhead. I have 
the connection here hooked up to the hooked up to the neck for the rejuvenator. I just want to go through and check the health. Uh, if we need to zap it, we'll zap it and then see it. It's not really worth trying to do a before and after comparison. I just want to make sure the tube is healthy. If not, we'll zap it and see how it looks afterward. Um, but anyway, um, we know it's not going to look that great because of all the screen burn. <clears throat> but let me get the camera set up on the overhead and we'll go through the setup procedure and run through the rejuvenation process. If we, if we need to rejuvenate it, uh, we'll do that. If not, we'll just do a clean and balance if the guns are healthy and then see how it looks after we get the chassis repaired. So let me get on the overhead and we'll see how this turns out. Okay, so we start by making sure all of our knobs and adjustments are all at zero. And we'll click over here to red. Okay, so now we want to turn on our heater. We want to set it to 6.3 volts. So we turn our knob here to 6.3 volts. There we go. Now you want to go to uh, heater leakage and G1 leakage. That should stay down here at zero. So if we go to heater leakage, we got and not quite zero. We have a little bit of leakage and it's creeping up slightly. So we do have a little heater leakage. It's not good, but at least it's not pegged out. Uh, G1 leakage, zero. So this is what we should see on the heater leakage, but we do have a little bit of leakage. It's not good, but not necessarily detrimental. G1 voltage, you want 50 volts. G1, you follow the, the scale here, you want it set to 50 volts. Now this is all applicable to a CR23 uh, 6.3 volt uh, tube, but okay, cutoff voltage, we're on red, so you want to turn this up very slowly to about the first, we'll go to about 15 right there. So <clears throat> uh, again, I use, uh, let's see, the heater, um, I just put this to about... Uh, you know, the, according to the manual, you want to set it to the first cutoff, which is right about there. But I, I, I don't do that. I go down here to about right there. So I usually set this to about 15 on the G1 scale. Uh, that's about where I set it, just to make sure that nothing goes, you know, wrong when the procedure gets done. Just a little bit more of insurance, because, you know, like I say, it's supposed to be right about there to the first section cutoff between, you know, where it goes from bad to yellow to green. Um, so I but I go back down here to about 15 on the G1. So there's r uh, red. Let's go to green. You want to go slowly. You don't want to induce too much into it at one time. So there is 15. And blue will go to... 15. All right. Now here's the important part where we check the health of the guns. So we'll go back to red here. And if we go to read emission, we're looking for it to be roughly in the middle of the good range. This is going to check the, the output of the red gun here. Yeah, not too bad. It's a little low. I'd like it to be a bit higher, about 1.4, but not too bad. <clears throat> Let's go to green. Uh, green is slightly less and blue. Yeah, they're all about the same. Um, we could we could shoot these. I don't know if we necessarily need to, but I think I'm going to shoot them because they need to be up a bit higher to about 1.4. But it's dangerous because with this having the screen burn and the age of it, it's dangerous when you shoot these because you never know what's going to happen. I think I'm going to do the clean and balance procedure first and then come back and look at the emission after that. So set color tracking, you got the set tracking right here. We want to go to line it up with that right there. And then we'll go to clean and balance and we'll hit this. Uh, we are on red, so we're looking for it to go up to about 1.0 and stay there. Uh, sometimes it'll reach 1.0, not quite, and then come back down. That's actually okay, uh, but ideally you'd want it to stay at about 1.0. As long as we reach 1.0, if it comes back down, I'll be okay with that. So let's hit the button and hold it. And we got to, look at that, right at 1.0. And it is creeping down, which, like I say, is okay. Uh, okay, I'm happy with that. It's not falling back down very quickly. So that's good. We'll go back to green, hoping to hit 1.0 again. Mm, yes, pretty close. Pretty close with what red was doing. Green is falling down at about the same rate. Oh, it's dropped. Oh, it kicked, dropped, caught itself. Now it's back to 1.0, and then it goes down. Okay, so that's all right. Let's go back to blue, or back, let's go to blue, I should say. Didn't quite reach up to where red and green were, but pretty close. And drops. That caught itself. Okay, that's good. And then it goes back up, and back down. All right, let's hit red one more time, see if we can get it to do that as well. 
Um, if it doesn't, that's okay. At least it's good. All right, so it's going down, it's going down, and yeah, it didn't quite do the same thing the two were doing, but try it one more time. Okay, all right, so now if we go to read emission, let's see if it's any better. That's the color tracking, here we go, we're on red. Mm, not quite better. Green's actually worse. Blue's worse. Okay, let's let's zap these here. All right. Okay, uh, we are on red. We are on rejuvenate. We're looking for it to come up to about 1.7, 1.8 around there. Hang out there for a bit, and then it comes back down. So let's see what happens. We're on 1.7. Perfect. And we'll hold it. We'll hold it. It's doing its thing. It's doing its thing. And... It's coming back down. Okay, you don't want to hold it too long. All right, we'll, we'll come back to it. Let's see what green does. A little bit. See, that's more normal of a reaction, but you're wanting it to stay up there like red did a little bit before it comes down, but that's okay. It hit one point, it hit 1.6.5. Well, 1.65, that's the better way to say it. Let's see what blue does. Yeah, about the same. Okay, ideally about 1.7, then it comes back down. We'll hold it, we'll hold it. And okay, now red. I'm gonna hit it, I'm gonna hold it as long this time. And red's staying up there. Hmm. Okay. Okay, so we zapped him. Let's go back to clean and balance one more time. We'll hit that. And 1.0. Okay, green. Not quite to 1.0. Blue. And not quite. Let's go see if emission's any better. Okay, so we're on red. Let's see what red does. Yeah, see, I say it's tricky. We were at 1.2, now we're down to 1.0, 1.0. Green, that's, I'm sorry, that's blue. That's blue. Green, that's about where it was. No detriment to green. Red, that's a bit higher, but uh, no detriment to red, no detriment to green. Blue is a bit lower than it was, <coughs> but I don't think there's any uh, danger involved with what we just did. <coughs> Pardon me. Um, okay, well, I guess that's about it. So we'll turn this off. I'll get everything disconnected, and then we'll turn this around, get the chassis yanked off, and see what we can find <laughs> with that. All right, so here we have the chassis off the tube, and I don't think this chassis has ever been removed from the tube because I had to cut the ground wire. I had to break away all of the ceiling here, the sealant here for the neck. I don't think this has ever been off the tube. I'm the first person in, what is it, uh, 35 years? 36 years, 36 years to uh, take this off. So, um, yeah, quite interesting. Anyway, so it's very dirty, of course. Uh, it's got the original white knob flyback, and I wasn't going to replace it, but it is cracked. If we zoom in here, it's very dirty. I had the fan going because um, I'm going to brush off some of this dirt off of here. But it is cracked. Um, Uh, right here on across the focus it's cracked right across there it's clean across there um, you know I don't like to replace parts just for the sake of replacing them uh, but because this is cracked it's really only going to kind of get worse um, I think the the white knob flybacks get a bad rep a lot of people say if the white knob flyback is there they replace it immediately but this has lasted 36 years so I don't think it's actually bad but um, it's only going to get worse, so I probably just will replace it because of the crack and things like that. It's also cracked very ever so slightly down here by the screen pot right across there. It's hard to see on camera, but so probably I'm probably not going to replace it for the te uh, purposes of testing the chassis because if it works, it works. I may just replace it down the road once it fails. So I'm probably going to keep it on here until it fails and then replace it because like anything else, if this is working, I'll probably just keep it on there.
We'll find out when we get this thing repaired. But before we turn it over, I haven't checked the bottom side yet. I don't think anyone's touched this in 36 years. Um, although you can see all the caps are original. If we zoom in here, no one has messed with that at all. And no one has messed with that at all, or, or this one. So these are all original caps. This is 100% factory uh, chassis. No one's touched it in 36 years. Uh, it looks okay, relatively speaking, uh, otherwise. I need to wash it, quite honestly, but let's get it working first, then we'll take care of cleaning it. Uh, but yeah, C57 has exploded its top. Kaboom. So, I don't know if that was because of the no uh, isolation transformer, but it could also just be a failed cap. All right, so a couple things here. Whenever you hook up a K7000 to a non-isolation transformer setup, uh, you're, you are guaranteed to take out D20 and D21 in the rectifier diodes area here. Uh, very rarely will you take out other ones, but almost always it's D20 and D21. So if we check D20 first, which is, you got uh, D19, D20, D21, D22, D23, and D24. So let's check D20 first. Any bets? Any guesses? Let's find out. Shorted. D21. Shorted. <laughs> How about 19? 19 is fine. 22 is fine. 24 is fine. And 23 is fine. Yep, just as I said, almost every time it's D20, D21. So confirmed those are bad. Now let's go through and check everything else. Let's check uh, R103, which is this ceramic guy right there. Should be 3 ohms. And it is 2.8, so that's fine. Uh, then we want uh, R104, should be 15 ohms. And it is R89, should be 3.9. And it is. R101 should be about 5K in circuit. I get a good connection on here. Yep, 5K. Um, R96 should be 1.8. Yep, 1.8K, I, sh I should say. Uh, R88 should be 1.8K. Yep, uh, R97 should be 270 ohms. And it is. All right, so those are all okay. Uh, let's check our HOT. Get out of here, you nosy little, nosy little pervert, or I'm going to slap you silly. All right. HOT is shorted. What about our voltage regulator? Voltage regulator, easiest way to test it is to go to ohms and test the two sides of the, of the, of the uh, B-plus resistor. If it reads zero, the, the voltage regulator is shorted. If it reads 180 ohms, then the voltage regulator should be okay. So what do we get? Voltage regulator is shorted 0 0.1. So we have a shorted voltage regulator. We have a shorted HOT. We have uh, D20, D21 are shorted. So we got four components to replace, um, but I don't know if the HOT and the voltage regulator were casualties of the no isolation transformer or if it was because of C57 or if all those were a combination of because of the transformer missing as well. So we got to do a cap kit, we got to do a new HOT, a new voltage regulator, new D20, new D21. And then uh, I didn't test uh, D13, D14, R91, R92. I'm not worried about those unless we have collapse. So, not going to bother with that. If we turn it on, we have collapse, then we'll troubleshoot that at that time. But, man, okay, well, let's take a look at the backside close up. Uh, holy crap! I think I found out why the HOT and the voltage regulator are bad. Holy crap! Not only, <laughs> not only did uh, this get hooked up to an isolation transformerless system which takes out 19 and 20, but I think this cap exploded and these two components got shorted because this was sitting in that frame. Um, you know, hang on a second, hang on. Uh, I 
I was just looking on the frame to see if there was something metal that could have done this, but this this was zip tied to that frame offset. It wasn't sitting in the the holder and all that. Look look at this. This trace is <laughs> holy crap. Uh, this was not done by an isolation transformerless connection. This was done because something shorted across here. Uh, you can see a big burn mark right there and a big burn mark right there. And this just completely, we can save this trace. This is a ground. We could save that and put a jumper across here. We don't really even need to do that, honestly, because it's all one big ground around the outside. But, um, well, no, I take that back. It's not, it, it ends right here and it ends right here. So I misspoke there, I'm sorry. So this will need to be replaced, but or repaired, I should say. But um, yeah, too big. So that, that touched ground. These two, these two points touched ground somewhere. And not only that, look at over here. Look at this, this whole trace. Zzzz, zip, zap. <laughs> Holy crap. I mean, it shot all the flux out of it. This is all, this looks like a train track, and all this stuff is flux that shot out under the bottom of it. At least from what I can ascertain. This is all factory flux here. And holy crap, man. That is just insane. So, this is salvageable. I mean, if it has continuity, we can keep it. But I think right here, I think, I think this area right here touched a metal part because it's gone. See here, this is, this is lifted up and that's lifted up. So that whole part of, that whole part of the trace, this hole right here just burned up. So I think there was a ground touched right here and a ground touched up here. Holy cow. Well, that's fixable, but we'll have to do some ingenuity in getting that repaired. Uh, R101 contacts here are, are not actually too bad. They're oxidized and burned up, but not. I've seen a lot worse. Um, this is untouched from the factory, so flyback pins have barely any solder on them at all. I'm not surprised that, um, at that, but the only real major rework we need to do is fixing these two traces now. We gotta fix these two traces, uh, do our normal re repairs of pads, R101 and such. Uh, we got to replace the bad faulty components and do the cap kit and then see where we're at. Um, the only question is, do I chronicle all this and detail it all or make an hour long video or just cut away, come back and show the repairs? Um, yeah, I mean, just, I think what I'll do is I'm going to, there's not, not much really to show with the bad solder joints. I mean, it's just the R101 that needs rework. So what I normally do is R101 gets very hot. So what I normally do is I will take all the solder off of these two points and clean up the pads and reflow new solder and put a bridge across here. I do the same thing here. I clean all the solder off, clean up the pad and put a bridge from here to here with solder. That way it ensures in the future it uh, passes the, the, the heat through to the trace much more efficiently and doesn't burn up the, the pads. Um, so I think I'll, I, I'm going to do that and then show you afterward. So I'll do all the rework and come back and show it off afterwards. So I need to repair this trace and I need to repair this trace. I need to do all my reflow work for R101 and various other things. I need to replace the HOT and the voltage regulator and D20 and D21. And I think that was it. Um, all right. So let's get that done. I am going to cut away. I'm going to come back and I'll have all that done. I forgot to do what I always do though, is wipe. It's always a good idea to wipe these. Uh, yeah, this the guide broke off of the the neck when I took the neck board off because it was, you know, it gets so hot that the plastic breaks. That's no big deal at all. Uh, you can actually just keep that in there, but I'll set it aside. So I always take these pots and just wipe them back and forth and then set them back to center position. So, I mean, as we, we just uh, rejuvenated the tube, well, hopefully, so ideally, if the guns are all okay and balanced, all of these should be fine being set to the center position. But we'll find out. Because some, a couple of these were like turned all the way off, so... Um, wait a minute, no, this is... That was all the way up. I think the green and blue cutoff were all the way up, so we may have had a, 
a weak blue and a weak green, but hopefully now we don't. Um, we'll set these as needed when we uh, get ready to test it on the tube. But all right, so let me cut away. I'll come back with the full cap kit, uh, all the repairs done. We'll show everything off, and then we'll hook it up and see if it works. Here we go. Well, and just like that, about an hour later, I've got everything done. I got a brand new HOT installed, a brand new voltage regulator installed. This is all the bad stuff. Uh, of course, full cap kit, which replaced <laughs> this bad cap. Uh, full reflow on everything and anything that possibly needed it. Uh, I got the new fuse installed. Uh, the new D20 and D21 installed. So here's all the bad parts. Put those aside. Um, and uh, you know what? Let's test these out of circuit. Let's test them after they've been replaced. I didn't test them yet. Uh, we can just go ahead and HOT if we just check it for continuity from center to... It shouldn't have continuity to either pin. That's dead. That's 36 ohms <laughs> uh, and zero. So the HOT is absolutely bad. Um, the voltage regulator pins one and four should not have continuity, and they do dead short. So uh, voltage regulator is bad. Uh, D19, I'm sorry, D20 and D21 dead short on that one. And hmm, well, that's weird. Come on. Oh, that one's good. Interesting. I don't know if this was uh, 20 or 21, but it looks like only uh, one of them was bad. Well, I changed them both anyway. Uh, okay, so yeah, uh, brand new HOT is installed. Brand new voltage regulator, brand new D20 and D21. Um, brand new fuse, which I'm sure it'll be fine. Now we tested all of the power components that would cause a, a fuse to blow, and we found the two that were bad, changed those out, as well as the diodes. Um, so let's test our diodes in circuit now just to make sure D20 is good, D21 is good. Uh, HOT we're looking for 0.4, about 0.5 voltage drop. 0.484 and 0.484 so HOT is good and now pins 1 and 4 with the diode checker should be 0 0.180 voltage drop come on you stupid thing stay out of the way uh, oh one point I'm sorry 0.15 the 0.18 is 180 ohms if we go to the if you recall before uh, we tested the why is it doing that Let's do it this way. Okay, it was uh, 0 0.1 ohms. So if we go now, it should be 180. Uh, yeah, 175. So, okay, so that's all good. All right, so all of our bad parts have been replaced. So now, I did the full cap kit, the full reflow, reflow cleaned everything up as best as I could. Board's looking much better. And then for the trace damage, I uh, put a piece of solder braid. I cut some solder braid off and used that as a jumper across the two parts that were burned up. Uh, right here around this point and right here I put a piece of solder braid and filled it with solder and used that as a jumper. Because uh, these are power, these carry power. This is the main ground across here and this is part coming off the flyback here. So I used uh, some cut off pieces of solder braid to put around there and then I used uh, glue to glue the trace down in place then I used some green paint in lieu of solder mask to paint the trace. It doesn't look, <laughs> they're not going to win any awards for the artistry but it is secure and solid and everything works now the way that it's supposed to. The, uh, the exposed trace is covered up on both of them. The solder braid is acting as a jumper and we have continuity now. So if we go from this point around here to this point we now have continuity, so our repair is good, and we are not uh, shorting out to this pin here around the repair or anything else around it, so that's okay. And then if we go from here to here, we should have continuity across the repair, and we do. So, yeah, um, I think we are good to go. I did the reflow on the, the pins for the flyback because those were pretty pretty thin. And now that we've got everything done, I think we are ready to do some testing. So let's get it on the tube and turn it on and see if it even turns on, see if uh, the, the fuse stays intact, and if it does operate, if it works fully, or if there's more troubleshooting that we'll need to do. So here we go. Okay, all hooked up. We got anode, neck, yoke, ground, power, video, and there's no remote board. Pots are on the board, so we'll still count to seven that way. 
Um, let's turn the generator on. Okay, so hopefully it works. Uh, if it does, we're you know I'm confident that it will work or turn on at least, unless something else is bad that I missed. But we're hoping to see that it actually operates correctly and doesn't have collapse or something else. Also, this is the first time we're powering it up after rejuvenating it, so we may see some sparks and crackles and pops in the neck. That's normal, so don't worry about that. So, uh, I guess let's see what happens. One, two, three. Okay, it did power on, nothing exploded. And it appears to be working. Uh, obviously we're way overdriven on contrast, so what I'm gonna do is we'll turn brightness all the way down, contrast all the way down, uh, fly back up until we get raster lines, right there, and then back down until they just go away, right there. Then we turn up our brightness until our background's no longer black, which is right. Oh, that's contrast. Hang on. Sorry. Turn that back down. Contrast. Our brightness up. Brightness. So right to there. Contrast up slightly. And uh, about right there. Not bad. Let's see if we can hit our focus a bit. And... It's about as good as it's going to get. Well, all right. Uh, success. <laughs> okay, uh, man. Of course, we got to let it run to a burn-in, but all right. Yep, it works without having to replace the flyback. That's the original flyback. Obviously, since it operates, I'm not going to change it right now. I'll let it fail and then change it later because there's no reason to change it now. Looks like we may have some 50, 60 hertz shenanigans going on. Let's switch to um, some... Something else here. What are we going to go for? Oh, man. Yeah, look at that screen burn. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, yeah, obviously credit something here. Um, yeah, I don't know what any of that says, but does anybody know what game this is? And, yeah, we got some fold over on the top. So what we need to do is adjust our 50, 60 hertz pot. This little guy right there. And we're going to adjust it until that fold over goes away. Right there's good. I say that's good. Okay, now let's adjust some vertical size here. Um, vertical position needs to... Oh, that was hold. We need to shift the position down slightly to roughly there, and then vertical size. Okay. Each position. Let's uh, shift this over this way. Uh, we got... or too wide here. You know what, let me get uh, the camera on the tripod and we'll adjust it in a more professional manner here. All right, so let's do this now. Let's get to uh, back to the main screen here. All right, now let's do H position. Roughly there. Okay, now let's make sure we can adjust our width. We'll grab the width tools here and have to use this one. We gotta do it from this side. Okay, and we're able to turn it successfully. So let's go. Well, that's as low as it gets. And all we're doing is increasing it now. Hmm. Let's hook up an actual PCB here and see if we can make it look... I can't... right now, it needs to shrink in about another, I'd say, three quarters of an inch on each side. And right now, this is the, the narrowest that it will go. So I want to hook up an actual board here and see if we can get something... how it's going to look. Okay, let's turn this off. Plug in the actual JAMA connector. And, yeah, um, we need to adjust some colors. Let's shift our position back over this way a bit. Yeah, not bad. Um, we need to turn up our contrast a little bit. That's good. Might be a bit too red. And let's hit our focus a little more. That's good. 
again we're limited by what we've got because this tube had a had to be rejuvenated, or I don't know if it had to be, but we did it anyway. Um, oh, we need to shift way over to the left here. Again, all the all of the pots are dead center for the color, like I mentioned, because ideally that's where they'd need to be uh, after you rejuvenate it and redo all the guns. But this is pretty close. We're a little too red. If we turn our red down slightly, uh, that's a, a little better. And we're a bit too green. Turn up our blue slightly. That's pretty good. Right there. That's about factory, if I do say so myself. Outstanding. Now, let's uh, get to, uh, let's make sure that the width is okay. A little, still a little bit too red, but not bad. Yeah, we're too wide. Um, I mean, this will work. Right there, we have a little bit on the side of each of the... I mean, that's fine. You can still see. We have... It's not cut off on the right, and it's not cut off on the left. I mean, that's okay. Uh, let's shrink this down a little bit. Vertical size. Roughly there. I mean, I guess... Uh, we need to fix... There we go. Well, I mean, I guess that'll work. You can you can see some of the burn right there. Yeah, you can see the burn right there on each side, but not not that bad. So I may use a different tube for the Russell Mania project and keep this as, as a spare for something else. Hey, we got the rare game over screen on camera. Look at that. If you don't know, this screen for the game over is, it only comes up like once in every 300 matches or 300 game overs or something like that. It's a very rare. When we got it on camera, all right. Uh, but hey, look at that. We have a successfully repaired K7000 back from the uh, back from exploding quite literally uh, So if we use this for the WrestleMania project, it'll remain to be seen, but at least uh, that pretty much concludes this so yeah um, Thanks for watching. I appreciate it. Hopefully you learned something and stay tuned for more on the project. I appreciate it